Bill, what's your position on the education funding amendment that's coming up before the legislature today? I've made that uh, known previously. Uh, I'm not comfortable with it. Uh, I think it's being rushed. I think it's uh, a far-right agenda to get some bills passed through before they lose office. Uh, so I'm not in support of it. What, what do you object most to it? Um, well, the education aspect of it, um, the vouchers, not a big advocate of public schools or public schools. If you want uh, state intervention in public schools, uh, I might agree uh, to the vouchers, but I don't think the public schools, I mean, I'm sorry, the uh, private schools want uh, state intervention, so I'm not a big advocate of vouchers. What, if you were governor now, what would you do to fix the education funding problem? Do for the education funding problem? What would you do to fix the uh, funding education funding problem? Uh, I'd bring in very smart people. We'd sit and collaborate, reach a consensus. Uh, the immediate fix would be to look at what cuts, how and, how and what cuts have impacted the education system. And then I'd pursue uh, whatever we needed to do. It's uh, look for revenue sources for them. I would address those. What's the biggest problem in education today? Is it a money problem? Is it a quality problem? Is there any problem? No, I think it's a combination. Uh, obviously, uh, there are efficiencies we need to improve across the state. Education is probably one of those. I, th I believe at this point we may have gotten education down to the bare bones. I have spoken with the president of Plymouth State College. Uh, I know they're doing some creative things with the cuts. Uh, further cuts, I'm sure, will impact them negatively. We won't know how this impacts uh, our state standing uh, nationally as far as the quality of our education and, and the quality of our students until maybe two or three years down the road. I prefer to maintain that national standing, high national standing. What is your position on public financing as a election? You're, you're probably going I'm to a big advocate of uh, public financing. I, obviously, at this point, I'm the most underfunded candidate. Um, I think we would have had a lot more uh, credible and legitimate candidates had that been available. Um, unfortunately, we don't, uh, but, but I'm a big advocate. I've already announced it several times. I'm probably the most progressive candidate in that respect and many others, and uh, very much an advocate. So are you saying that you and Silly and Hassan are not legitimate candidates? No, no, I'm saying we're all legitimate candidates. I'm saying we'd have more candidates more jump. Legitimate. Yes, yes, yes. You know, Bill, how, as you know, um, it, already in this race, it's often described as two major Democratic candidates. How do you become a major candidate in the minds of the media and the voters? No, I understand. Good question. Um, things are starting to accelerate now. Obviously, my position backs one candidate a little bit more than the other candidate, so it, it gives that candidate further voice. Uh, through my recent appearances, I've garnered more and more attention. I'm getting letters now. I've actually had uh, some people jump ship uh, with their candidates, come, come forward and uh, profess some, some support for my candidacy. Um, I think you're going to th see things spin up now. Uh, the next couple of months. Obviously, me registering first or filing first uh, is an indication I'm, I'm in it for good and I'm in it to win it. All right. Thanks. Can you list three things beyond your military service that makes you different than the other two Democrats running? Well, that's one. I'm fresh perspective, but uh, obviously I've stepped out on the issue of revenue, revenue streams and alternative to the regress of property tax. Uh, we put the burden on the, prop, on the shoulders and the backs of our property owners. I don't like that. I'm trying to propose um, an alternative revenue source. I threw out income tax as a possibility. The caveat to that, obviously, would be a reduction in the property tax. I would not advocate an increase in taxes without some corresponding reduction uh, in property taxes. Uh, third, I've stepped out that at this point I'm, I'm anti-gambling. I'm not pro-casino. Uh, another progressive position, and then obviously uh, public funding, campaign funding is, is the other big one. Can I just follow up? Um, on the income tax to lower property taxes, how do you protect the 30% of renters who may not actually see a reduction of their rent based on the transfer of funds from the property tax to an income tax? Those people would be hit with the income tax but wouldn't necessarily see reductions in their rent based on the property tax drop. -in. So I would how would you rectify that? Uh, obviously, I would hope that there would be some corresponding reduction based on the drop of property taxes. Uh, it's, n it's not at the forefront right now, and I'd have to look at uh, possible uh, fiscal alternatives uh, for renters. 
uh, obviously everybody in the state should contribute to state functions. Um, so even the renters should have an obligation uh, to provide some type of funding to the state. Uh, everybody from you know the poorest member to the richest member in the state should have some equal input, monetary input, investment in the state. As a good neighbor, as a good member of community, everybody has that responsibility. Now, to answer your question directly, I haven't got uh, an alternative for that other than hoping that the reduction in uh, property taxes would have a corresponding reduction in rents.